Pete, a number of attorneys general around the country are involved in a major lawsuit with Google. Of course, there are a lot of lawsuits floating around out there these days. Tell us a bit about this particular suit. This lawsuit actually began in 2020 as two federal and state lawsuits against Google alleging various parts of anti-competitive behavior and violations of antitrust laws. And the case was combined. And, of course, Pennsylvania's attorney general, Michelle Henry, is involved in this case. And the case centers uh, originally around seven different contentions by the Department of Justice at the federal level and more than 38 state attorneys general now. The judge in the case, Judge Mehta, last year, right before it went to trial, narrowed the government's charges from seven to three. In other words, he threw out four of the charges because they were effectively spurious. I mean, they were they were frivolous charges, including one by Google's competitors that their search results were being displayed improperly in Google's own platform. Uh, the judge pretty much decided that that was laughable and got rid of it. The remaining charges center around primarily whether Google's search engine is being preloaded onto other devices, primarily Apple devices, through an agreement that effectively constitutes a monopoly. And that charge is really the central contention that both sides argued over during the latter part of 2023. The case uh, has now been presented and is in the judge's hands. This is not a jury trial. It's a bench trial. And a verdict could come down uh, early this year, but then again, it could be several months from now. So we are awaiting the verdict in that case, while there are many other antitrust cases brewing, including one against Amazon and an investigation in the grocery store merger between Albertsons and Kroger and whether the Federal Trade Commission and other federal authorities might get involved in that merger. So there's a whole lot going on in the antitrust front. It sounds like a very boring area of law, but it's something that taxpayers need to be concerned about because not only are they spending a lot of money on these cases at the government level, but taxpayers can be harmed when innovation gets slowed by antitrust action and companies say, this isn't worth the investment because the government is going to come after us if we're successful. Well, that's a lot of innovation that never happens. Innovations that governments can use to become more efficient and save tax dollars. I mean, think cloud data storage. Uh, that's something that's come out of the Internet and tech revolution that governments have been able to take advantage of to cut their costs and keep taxes from rising as fast as they have. Taking a look at all these antitrust cases here, Pete, do you see the federal government becoming more active in this area? Oh, yes, definitely so. You can tell in the budget requests for the Department of Justice and the Federal Trade Commission, which are the two main federal entities pursuing antitrust cases. Uh, they asked for massive increases under the Biden administration, 20, even 30 percent annually, more than half a billion dollars worth of budget that uh, both entities could use to create all kinds of mischief in the private sector. And I know that conservatives, in some cases, wonder whether these tech companies are on their side and whether they're politicized to the point where conservatives don't have a voice on these platforms. That's an important question to ask. But an equally important question is, do we really want to give more power to the federal government, especially the Biden administration's two antitrust entities to go after U.S. companies when competitor companies abroad, especially in China, are effectively benefiting whenever we hamstring our own companies with higher taxes and more legal actions? I would think not. 
We are talking with Pete Sepp from the National Taxpayers Union. We're talking about a case the federal government has, uh, an antitrust case of sorts, against Google. And looking at this case, you mentioned, Pete, there's been a lot of maneuvering on it. The federal judge has thrown some of the charges out. The remaining case, how strong do you see it as being? I think it's fairly weak in a number of senses. And, And the biggest one is that the government has kept trying to argue that a deal between Apple and Google, whereby uh, Apple pays some kind of remuneration for having Google feature its search engine and, and or Google paying that remuneration to have uh, the search engine on Apple's devices is some kind of unseemly relationship. Well, that's what advertisers do in the retail sector all the time. I mean, it's how you get your brand uh, preferentially displayed on shelves. And in any case, Apple was saying uh, during the trial, well, Google's search engine was the best one. And in any case, it only takes a few clicks now to change your search engine preference. It's not like the old days, pre-internet or even early internet, where you had to jump through all kinds of hoops to change your computers or your device's settings. It's pretty easy now. And so what we have here is the government essentially arguing that, uh, well, competitors are being harmed by this practice and a very weak case that consumers are actually being harmed. And that's important because for the better part of 40 years, most antitrust policy has been governed by what's called the consumer welfare standard. The government doesn't step in and try to mediate between companies unless consumers are actually being harmed. The National Taxpayers Union here, Pete, has recently conducted a survey of attorneys general to determine their priorities. Want to tell us a little bit about what that survey found? This was a poll in Pennsylvania by uh, Fabrizio Lee and Associates, and we asked the question, so what are your priorities as a voter for the attorney general? What should the attorney general be spending taxpayer resources on? What types of activities? And it turns out upwards of two-thirds, two-thirds of respondents decided that attorneys general ought to be focusing on the basics, prosecuting companies that gouge consumers during and after disasters, prosecuting criminals. That seems pretty obvious. Cracking down on human trafficking, protecting consumers from fraud. The vast majority of Pennsylvanians say Those kinds of functions are what they expect from their attorney general. When asked if investigating companies for antitrust violations should be a priority, barely 5% of all of those polled said, yes, that should be a priority. That's roughly within the margin of error of the poll. So this is not a priority among Pennsylvania taxpayers. And I think uh, the attorney general uh, in Pennsylvania, Attorney General Henry, ought to be reading these results and saying, hmm, I think I need to prioritize my job. And we will point out that the Office of Attorney General in Pennsylvania is one of three statewide constitutional or so-called row offices that are up for election by voters statewide this year. The uh, Attorney General's office, you mentioned Michelle Henry, no relation to yours truly, but Michelle Henry is not running. She was appointed to fill the unexpired term of Josh Shapiro when he became governor. So we have an open seat for Attorney General and a lot of maneuvering going on among the parties as to who those nominees will be. But going forward here, Pete, whether it's with Attorney General Michelle Henry or a new Attorney General after the first of the year, are there other tech cases that are likely going to come into play? Oh, yes. There is a case against Amazon that uh, the Federal Trade Commission is already pursuing. There, again, the commission is arguing that Amazon, uh, among online superstores, is trying to corner the market. Well, the trouble is the Federal Trade Commission has created a whole new category of stores in order to contend that Amazon has a dominant position. That's kind of ridiculous. Uh, The federal government will almost always have other tech companies and its sites like Facebook. It has lost in court against Facebook before. 
It has settled and lost in court against Google before. It will likely do so against other tech companies because the further that FTC chair Lena Khan and the DOJ's Josh Cantor decide to veer away from that consumer welfare standard I spoke about, the more they do that, the more they are going to go into uncharted legal territory that judges are not going to appreciate and the defenses uh, for the companies are going to be able to just pick those apart. Pete Sepp, president of the National Taxpayers Union. And Pete, as we wrap up here, tell us a bit about the National Taxpayers Union and also where can folks go on the web to learn more? We're a nonprofit, nonpartisan citizen group founded all the way back in 1969 to work for lower, simpler, and fairer taxes, less wasteful government spending, and accountability from public officials at all levels. We can find out more about NTU at our website, NTU, our initials for National Taxpayers Union, NTU.org. Pete Sepp of the National Taxpayers Union. Pete, good talking with you. Thank you. Absolutely. Take care. Pete, a number.